everybody. Hello, mamas. We are here with It's Gonna Be Okay with Dr. Roseanne. And I am so excited because we have one of my all-time favorite human beings, Cynthia Thurlow, and we're gonna dive into all things intermittent fasting. And I was telling Cynthia, this is one of the most common questions I get from parents, from dads, from moms about, you know, what is intermittent fasting? How does it work? How is it different from just skipping breakfast? And how the heck do they do it where they can have better brain health, less anxiety and stress? Yes, you can, you know, what you eat does affect your anxiety levels and depression. Um, and we're going to dive all into that as we talk about fasting for depression and anxiety with my dear friend, who Cynthia, who is the foremost expert in intermittent fasting for women. So welcome, Cynthia. I'm really excited that you're here. Yeah, I've been really excited and looking forward to our conversation because I, I know for so many people on just about every level where given the past two years, we are definitely very focused on brain health and our reaction to things that we can and cannot control. And, and I love how, you know, both of our backgrounds kind of dovetail into this topic. Yeah. And, you know, we're all about solutions. I mean, that's the whole point of this podcast and my work is, you know, how can people feel better every day? How can we get that stress level down? And and when it is clinical anxiety and depression, you know, there's so much more you can do besides taking a pill. And like I said, you know, a few minutes ago, what you put in your mouth has a positive impact it can have a positive impact. It can have a negative impact. And intermittent fasting has just, I mean, you have this viral TED Talk. If everybody hasn't seen it. Um, 10 million views. It is viral because people are learning about intermittent fasting. They hear about it and they don't know what it is. So, you know, what is intermittent fasting really for people? Yeah, I mean, it, it, it's obviously a, a lot of people think of it as being new and novel, but I like to remind people it's been around uh, for a very long time. It dates back to biblical times, and it's part of all the major religions, largely because it was incorporated into spiritual events. But the easiest way to think about fasting is it's eating less often. It's really that simple. We like to make things complicated, but I'm all about, as I know you are, making things very kind of simple and clear and so it could be as simple as you eat dinner at six o'clock at night, and then you don't eat breakfast till 8 a.m. the next morning. And that gives you 14 hours uh, in a fasted state, which most of the time you're sleeping, so you're not even cognizant of it. But this is a large departure from the kind of traditional methodology that we need to eat three meals a day and snacks. And I would be the first person to argue that the rise of the processed food industry coupled with a lot of ingredient changes, like things like high fructose corn syrup, has led to chronic disease states, the likes of which we've never seen before, inflammatory disorders, metabolic disease, et cetera. And so to me, it's really a public health threat that we are eating too frequently. And, and certainly the foods that we eat can be the most important and impactful decisions that we make, not just on physical, but also on emotional, spiritual health as well. And so I agree with you wholeheartedly that the food we eat really impacts the gut microbiome and impacts a whole lot of other things. But really to think about on a very succinct level, intermittent fasting is eating less often and it can be flexible. It can shift from day to day. It can work around your lifestyle. It's not designed to be complicated, although I know people like to make it complicated. I like to keep it pretty simple because the more simple we can make it, the easier it is to make those changes and have them be successful. And, you know, there people do make it complicated mm -hmm. and they they have layers. Right. So like, you know, and, and, you know, one of the questions I have for you is how is it different from mm -hmm. just skipping breakfast? But there's also different ways people intermittent fast. Right. Mm -hmm. They keto blend with intermittent fast or paleo with intermittent fast. But how is it intermittent fasting different from just skipping breakfast? It's a great question. I think one that's really important for people to understand it really has a lot to do with while you are in a fasted state, there are counter regulatory mechanisms in the body that help um, get rid of things that don't belong. So we have this term autophagy. It's like taking out the trash. And the only time that it's really potentiated or magnified is when we're in a, in a fasted state. 
We also think about the fact that a lot of the benefits we get from fasting are a direct reflection of better hormonal balance. So when our insulin levels are low, like in response to when we're not eating, we are able to eventually get into a process where we can tap into fat stores for energy. We have these specific types of ketones that diffuse across the blood brain barrier. And that's oftentimes what gives us a lot of mental clarity. So when we're looking at caloric restriction versus fasting, the differentiators are really important for people to understand that it, the beauty in fasting is what goes on in the body in a non-fed state. And it is not as simple as calories in, calories out. This is something that it's kind of a very reductionistic uh, way of thinking. I always say our bodies are far more sophisticated. Our bodies recognize macronutrients, protein, fat, and carbohydrates. Calories is a unit of energy. It is very much a, a very reductionist way of thinking about food and, and intake of food. So I remind people that yes, people that are intermittent fasting typically are skipping a meal. They're eating within a condensed feeding window, but it's what goes on behind the scenes. Sometimes the things that are not, you know, not able to be visualized uh, outside the body, that's where the beauty lies with fasting. And that's where you can really tap into some intrinsic uh, survival mechanisms that are in the body, but in our chronically overfed state where we have access to this hyper palatable processed foods and the overeating that most of us are doing, that's when these mechanisms are blunted or they're not able to be fully utilized. And is there a point, Cynthia, because, you know, in intermittent fasting, they talk about windows of time mm -hmm. that you actually eat, whether they call them feeding windows, right? There's different terminologies. Mm -hmm. And so you will hear people like uh, a well-known uh, IF or is Jennifer Aniston mm -hmm. talks about this, right? And other celebrities, right? Um, but you know, is there an optimal time? Is 12 hours the minimum? Is it 10? How do people best start with this if they've never even heard of it? Yeah. I, and I think this is a really important distinction. So if you're eating three meals a day and snacks, my first recommendation is to stop snacking because you have to get to a point where you can structure your meals properly so that you're not hungry in between meals. If you're hungry in between your meals, you didn't eat enough protein. That's number one. That's right. Uh, and it's critically important for people to understand that most of us are consuming not enough protein and too much carbohydrate. I'm not anti-carb, but I think that's an important distinction to make. So when we're thinking about where a starting point is, I think 12 hours of digestive rest, and that's what I call it, 12 hours of time where you're not eating is a really good starting point. So you eat at dinner at six o'clock at night, you don't eat again until 6 p.m. in the morning. And really, most of us, when we wake up in the morning, we're not hungry. It just becomes a product of habit that we get up and we're like, oh, my stomach growls. Oh, I need to eat. No, actually, you don't. If you're an adult, generally speaking, you don't need to eat with that first hunger growl. Sometimes that can just be dehydration. It can be your body's way. Absolutely. And I don't think we talk enough about dehydration, right? Yeah. And especially if we're in places where we're wearing our masks. It mm -hmm. just seems a lot easier, Cynthia, to get dehydrated. And um, even though I carry a big, have a big water bottle, I have been uh, saying that I'm going to have three to five herbal teas a day just to increase, just plain herbal tea with nothing mm -hmm. in it to increase my hydration. And I feel different and, and yeah. certainly less hungry. Yeah. And I think it's important for people to know that more often than not, when your stomach growls, you're dehydrated and you're not actually hungry. Yeah. So that's an important distinction. And then I think the one that the, the window that I think people are most familiarized with is a 16, eight. So slowly working your way to 16 hours fast with an eight hour feeding window. Now, does that mean that once someone is fat adapted, once their body is metabolically flexible to switch between fats and carbs as a fuel source, that, that people want to stay in that gear all the time? Absolutely not. I always say monogamy is good, but we like to change things up when it comes to fasting windows, food and exercise. So we don't do the same thing every day, mm -hmm. but it's a really good point to say, I'm going to work up to 16 hours fast. And it may be that you go from 12 hours to 12 and a half to 13. It may take four to six weeks. Some people are effortlessly do it. They, you know, they're like a duck to water. They're within a week, they're doing 16 hours fast. So they feel great. Other people, it takes longer. And so one of the things that I sometimes will see is that the more processed and carbohydrate laden someone's diet is, typically the longer it's going to take them because their body, it's almost like you get out of sync. You know, when you're not metabolically flexible, right. it's like you have to like retrain your body. Okay, you're going to have to get a little hungry and you're going to have to work around it. And, and of course, there are all sorts of 
tricks that I have that can help people work through their hunger uh, mechanisms. But yeah, and, and I know in your book, Intermittent Fasting mm-hmm. Transformation, you lay out an awesome 45 day program because you know there's a lot of myths and mm-hmm. there's a lot of misconceptions. And just because we're reading about Jennifer Aniston, you know, it's like grapevine, like she's getting interviewed mm-hmm. and, you know, they take out clips and there's a right way to do things and there's a wrong way to do things. And I do love intermittent fasting for brain health for um, mental health in general, if you have specific conditions, you always want to check with your physician or your provider Mm -hmm. whenever you're starting something new, but this is a resource to get started with. And it lays out Mm -hmm. what you need to do. I always feel like I need, I always go to the authority for everything. I know when my kid uh, who Max, who has Lyme disease, I never went to a regular doctor. I only Mm -hmm. went to the experts. (laughs) Um, it still was a tricky road, but you want to really go to the authority and get the best information. And, you know, you don't want to, you know, Google's great, but this is about saving you hours and hours and hours of Googling and uncertainty and laid out by a professional who is the recognized expert in women's um, intermittent fasting. And not that guys can't use this, but, you know, it's really a, a great program for that. And I think that's so important to start out right. And, you know, the 12 hour window, let's talk about you, you mentioned uh, autophagy, which I always refer to the dishwasher cycle, mm-hmm. because what it does is um, it, it cleans things up. And when you're cleaning up the brain, we're getting rid of mitotoxins and things that interfere with how our brain works, right? We're doing things like regulating our blood sugar. Mm-hmm. We're giving it more protein and ideally fat. It's really important to have a nice, healthy healthy fats um, and appropriate amounts for brain health and for gut microbiomes on both sides, right? Um, That it's, you know, these are things that know, we know help with brain vitality um, to help us think faster. I can tell you when I started to, um, I've been an intermittent faster on and off since the early nineties. We didn't have a name for it, Cynthia. (laughs) <laughs> you were just ahead of the curve, right? I just knew I felt better mm-hmm. when I didn't have breakfast. And um, and I went back to it because even though I was eating like super healthy breakfast, I was I was doing like uh, a protein, like a deli meat, or um, I was doing smoked salmon. I noticed I felt a little tired after mm-hmm. I had breakfast. So I got rid of it again and I feel much, much better. And, you know, I always try to go for at least 12 hours. I try to go 16 to 18, depending on the day. Um, and you also mentioned something really important about not doing the same thing all the t- time. It's just, mm-hmm. it's like that with your food. So if you're many of my intermittent fasting people that I work with, you know, as parents, as individuals, they often have the same thing every day. That is not good for brain health. And that is not good for inflammation. You want to rotate your foods. Um, But, you know, talk about how some of these benefits improve just overall brain health, thinking, you know, um, your attention levels are different. and, And then we'll talk about anxiety and depression. Yeah, I always like to start with the fact that when we're not in a fed state, our fasting insulin levels are low. And this is a really important distinction because on a lot of levels, people don't understand the interrelationship between high insulin and not only metabolic diseases, but also cognitive issues like Alzheimer's. And women in many ways are protected from the risk of cognitive decline until they go into menopause. And so- Mm -hmm. we we could probably spend a whole hour just talking about the influence of sex hormones like estradiol and progesterone and testosterone on brain health. But the really important thing, and this, this is accounted for, for both men and women is that when our insulin levels are low, we are able to diffuse the efficient use of breakdown of fatty acids. So ketones, beta hydroxybutyrate right across the blood brain barrier. And our brain actually loves fat. What people don't understand, our brain doesn't love glucose. Our brain loves fat. It is a much more efficient use of fuel. It is uh, one that will give us a lot more uh, cognitive clarity, uh, more executive functioning. We know that when we're in this fasted state, we're also um, producing BDNF, which is 
Yes. Um, this brain derived neurotrophic factor, which can help with neuroplasticity. So connections, you know, neuroplasticity, we always say whatever fires together, wires together. So we're getting healthier brain connections. Um, we know that we have increased stress tolerance. This is really, really important, especially given the last two years. Um, brain health, you know, our, our, our brain is constantly taking in sensory information, information from our bodies and stress, uh, stress is, can be beneficial. It can also be detrimental. So hormesis or, uh, you know, hormetic stressor is the right amount of stress in the right amount at the right time. And that's why intermittent fasting can be exactly a hormetic stressor. Beneficial stress makes us stronger, makes us mentally stronger, cognitively stronger, and I just keep tying in the, the issue with metabolic health. We want to keep our insulin levels low. We don't want to run the risk of developing insulin resistance, leptin resistance, diabetes, because these are not just metabolic issues. They are brain health issues too. So it's certainly very important that we want to make sure these are all, you know, calibrated Cynthia, properly. They are counters. I mean, this is a podcast where a lot of people listening are working with or loving, hopefully working and loving, but are parents to kids who are struggling with mm -hmm. their clinical issues. And as a mom who, you know, has two kids with special mm -hmm. needs, it's not an easy road. Mm -hmm. And so stress will um, have you, you know, derail what you're eating and you can, you know, carbs. Why do we eat so many carbs? Because they're accessible, right? And people tend to buy carbs. Like whenever I tell people my kids are mostly paleo where we do gluten-free grains, but not much, but my kids want, just like yours, they want um, non-carb things. Like they want meat they want veggies. They like fruit. So that is a carb, but they're not eating processed foods. You mm -hmm. know, and then people will say, well, you're Italian. What do you mean? You don't have this and you don't have that. And I'm like, well, you know, that's not how most people eat. Yeah, they have pasta, but it's, it's not the same. That's it's certainly not American Italians. You know, the way that they eat are different and real Italians in Italy eat a variety of foods and mm -hmm. lots of vegetables and whatnot. Um, so we want to think about that, you know, as a parent, we, when we are calm, we can share the calm. Mm -hmm. And intermittent fasting for me is a way for parents to increase the regulation of their brain and their body so they can feel better and deal with the stress, right? Mm -hmm. Because stress is stress. It's how we look at it. It's how we problem solve around it. And a time when, as you mentioned, this is a very overwhelming time. Um, so I feel like this is just a resource for you more than anything else. And there's lots of good things. And people ask me, should my kids do this? Do I think, no, this is not, this is not for kids. Do I have some teenagers that are doing this? Yes. Um, it, it's a different, it's a different situation. Um, and, you know, we're really talking about for adults, um, using intermittent fasting, but you know, there are times when I do have some teenagers where I work with and they, you have to go with what feels good. Just like when I said, I think it's time for me to intermittent fast again, because I really needed it. And I, huge difference for me, huge. Well, and I think it's an important kind of distinction to mention that, you know, when someone is still growing, like when people ask about, you know, preteens and, and younger children, no, I don't think it's a, a good choice. I do have a 14 year old who's a competitive swimmer and he naturally does not want to eat breakfast in the morning. There's no amount of cajoling and twisting his arm. And so after talking to his pediatrician, we just decided if he wants to eat at 10 o'clock in the morning, that's okay. And he gets yeah. plenty, plenty, plenty of food in during his feeding window. But when people are still growing, I think you have to be really deliberate about ensuring that they're not missing opportunities to have feedings. I do have a 16 year old. There's no way he could ever fast. He is hungry all the time and he eats really, really healthy. He's just yeah. he's six feet tall and still growing. And so um, my 14 year old is growing too. It's just his natural inclination is not to eat. But one of the things that I think is so helpful is for people to understand the interrelationship um, between uh, our brains and our guts. And so the gut microbiome, the food choices we make can make healthy neurotransmitters like serotonin and dopamine, right. or it can, you know, have a, 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 a not enough diversity of healthy neurotransmitters. And this can directly impact, you know, food and mood and all of these things. And, and what I've seen in, in many instances is that when people start making better food choices, even when they're still fasting, 
they will have less major depression. They will have less anxiety. They'll have better executive functioning. And these are all things we need. Like, I, I think for me, the best example I can give is that when I'm traveling and I'm doing a lot of public speaking, I will just fast longer because I just feel like I'm so much sharper. I have less, you know, anxiety. I mean, let's be honest, everyone has a little bit of anxiety when they do some public speaking, but you just feel much more empowered. And so I think for all the, you know, men and women that are listening to your podcast or watching us right now, really understanding that there are benefits beyond just the body composition. That's kind of what people want to focus on. But I always say, that's what might bring them, Cynthia. Mm -hmm. But then it's how do they feel on the inside? And I think, you know, um, what people don't realize is about anxiety and depression, right? We've been led by good marketing to believe there's only one way to fix your neurotransmitters, and that's by pharma. And it's not the truth. So it's surprising for most people to realize that serotonin is almost exclusively created in the gut. 95% of serotonin is created in the gut. Guess what? If your microbiome, the balance of your bacteria is not healthy, that's going to affect neurotransmitters. And that means that your anxiety and depression are more likely to be, it's more likely to be an issue. The good news is tools like intermittent fasting and really making sure that we are having a healthy microbiome can balance you out and can help you reduce the symptoms associated with anxiety, depression. I mean, I get to see that all the time with the people that I work with. They're almost in shock at how much control they have over their anxiety and and depression, which is exciting. And then, you know, it makes me mad at the same time because nobody told them, you know? Right. Well, and I think, you know, the other piece when we're talking about serotonin, that's so important is that serotonin begets melatonin and melatonin is this master antioxidant in the body. We've got melatonin clocks throughout our body, including our gut. And so it's not just a sleep hormone, but I remind people that when we get a healthier microbiome, we're making more serotonin, we're going to make more melatonin, we're going to have better quality sleep, deeper REM, oftentimes deeper deep sleep. And and that translates into kind of profound benefits for our health. I know that, uh, you know, you, Roseanne and I are always always hacking our sleep. We're always trying to tinker. You're so much better at it. You know, whenever Cynthia and I are together, I'm out till 4 a.m. I'm not lying. It's the truth. And Cynthia's asleep at 8 p.m. But that's okay. <laughs> I don't know if it's 8 p.m. <laughs> Maybe 10, 15. Yeah. But uh, West Coast time, which is really 1 a.m. Mm-hmm. But um, I-, I live a rock star life when we go out. I- I'm not going <laughs> to lie. Do. That's what Cynthia's hu- husband called me. And I'm like, you know what? I like that. That's pretty true. But mm-hmm. sleep is so important. And, and you know, we're as women, you know, we are the caretakers and we shortchange things. Oh, I'll get up early and do that. Oh, I'll do this. I'll do that. And I'm not even saying it's things around your own health. It's usually caregiver things. Mm-hmm. You know, who's taking your kid to the 5 a.m. practice? You are. <laughs> you know, and these are these are hard things to do. And so what are all the things you can do to bring some balance into your life and intermittent fasting is a way that to bring it into your lifestyle. And that's, that's the key. We talk so much about lifestyle because routine and structure makes it easier, you know? Um, and it's not hard to fast. It pe- you know, it's not hard to, to extend that window. It's like, this is just my routine. It's what I do. Right. Well, and I think because over time, you know, it, it's it's just like the concept of atomic habits. You know, you set the goals, you, you know, put things in place, you make it happen, you take action. And I think for a lot of people, uh, it becomes such an easy part of our day to day existence that you can't imagine it without it. I'll, I'll give you an example. So at Christmas time, we went away. Um, and we were in a very tropical location where I didn't set a clock and woke up every day. And so I was changing up my fasting and my feeding windows just to kind of see how I felt. And we were very physically active all day long. So a couple of days I did eat breakfast and boy, did it feel strange to eat before 10 o'clock in the morning. Doesn't it? it but it, but here's the one thing that I think is important, flexibility mm-hmm. and variety in every areas of our lives are really helpful. So adjusting those fasting and feeding windows, you know, adjusting your sleep schedule, all of these things have profound benefits you know, getting light exposure first thing in the morning, things that, that cost zero, they don't cost anything that, you know, these hacks that we can do that actually improve not only physical, but mental health as well. 
Yeah, it's so important. And, you know, there really are a lot of physiological benefits to in, mm. from intermittent fasting, you know, for mental health, for anxiety and depression, and people just aren't aware of it. And I so appreciate this conversation because it's another solution that mm. I'm hoping is an aha moment for people, for them to consider for themselves. Um, because people are, you know, these are the highest levels of anxiety and depression during this pandemic. And also, uh, feelings of wanting to harm themselves that we've ever experienced. And, you know, it's all about you mm -hmm. and what you can do. And I want people to feel the power of what they can do. And it, for me, that's what intermittent fasting is one mm -hmm. of those tools for the toolbox. Um, and what I love about your book is that it's very simplistic in that it's, it's not simplistic. It gives you the information, mm -hmm. but she made it simple for you to understand what to do. Um, you know, and I know you are the women's intermittent fasting expert and there are other books on intermittent fasting. And, you know, my question to you is like, what is in this book? that is different, that is going to help people. Um, and maybe weight loss is a part of what they want, but, but how is this going to help women in particular with hormones and their mental mm -hmm. health? You know, what, what do you offer in this book? Cause I, you know, you know, I'm super excited. I'm like super fan for this book and I want everybody to get it, which is why it says order, order <laughs> it. You go to the authorlog.com mm -hmm. backslash book. It's going to be in the notes and it, it will be available on YouTube as well. But, you know, tell people about your book and, and how it's going to help them. Well, you know, other people have written books on fasting, obviously, and, and some of them might speak very openly about how they influenced my own fasting journey. But this is the first book. It's not a chapter, but an entire book devoted to the unique needs of women, honoring our physiology, not fear mongering about our physiology. And let's be clear, whether you're still in your peak fertile years you're in perimenopause, the five to 10 years preceding menopause, or in, in menopause, you know, 12 months without a menstrual cycle, you can benefit from fasting. You do have to fast differently. Uh, and I kind of walk you through the physiology. I walk you through the hormones. Um, this program, IF45, which is part of the book, is what I have fine-tuned over the last three years. Um, obviously, when I did that second TED Talk, not realizing what was going to happen, all of a sudden, there was a lot of attention on me coaching women through fasting. And so this is, you know, after going, going through this with thousands of patients and clients, this is the best of, you know, what I have been able to, you know, bring to fruition. And so I know how to troubleshoot. I know how to, you know, make recommendations that are going to be effective. There's challenges in the books. So if you're already someone that's fasting, there are challenges for you that are specific for you. If you're new to fasting, it, you know, kind of gently walks you through the process. Um, and obviously there are a lot of great resources. I feel like I've been so incredibly blessed uh, that I've had the opportunity over the last three years to connect with so many uh, individuals in the health and wellness space, like yourself doing amazing things and, and knowing that you, there, there are, there's information in this book that has profound health benefits beyond just the physical things. A lot yeah. of people like to focus on what I think is most important is that people feel good from the inside. And so this is a great strategy to embrace. Yeah, absolutely. And as I say all the time, you know, if you don't have your mental health, really nothing else sort of matters, right? It doesn't matter what, what cars in the driveway or how you look, if you're not feeling good in the inside. And this is, this is a tool to make you help you to feel good mm -hmm. in the inside. And it, and it, there's a physiological reason, there are multiple mm -hmm. physiological reasons. And, you know, whether, you know, the book is a starting point or you want to do a program, uh, you know, I'm a geek and I like to know more and I think programs are great. And um, I am always listening to audiobooks. by the way, mm -hmm. like I am very, I'm lucky. I have 30, 35 minutes each way in the car in the morning. And it's one of my favorite times because I get to listen to audiobooks, um, which is pretty cool. But I do like to have the the book too to open it up and look at it. So I often buy both. Yeah, um, well, it's funny. I just finished recording the audiobook, and and that is quite quite a process. I I was very humbled by the process, very grateful for the opportunity to go through all that. But I agree with you. Uh, I'm always listening to something in the car. But if it's something I'm I know I'm going to want to read again, or if I want to yeah. take notes or highlight it. I like having the physical book, which is why in our space, 
sometimes you get a PDF variation, like an electronic PDF. And, and I have to sit there with a notebook. As I'm I know, it, I know. So and I if, can you, if you can't figure it, figure it out, and Cynthia is, she is an information junkie and she's a researcher. She is just so brilliant on this topic and a lot of other areas. And she has done her due diligence and like, you really want to dive in there with her because she will have gotten the best information for you to guide you. Um, and I, I just know that there's many times I call Cynthia, you know, and I'm like, okay, what is it? You know, and she gives me the details. So it's, you know, and you want the details, but she, it's broken down in a way that's usable and digestible, which is equally as important because right now, busy moms are listening <laughs> and we are both busy moms. Yeah, um, and you know, and Cynthia and I are both intermittent fasters for different reasons. Like I really do it for brain health, um, more than any other reason. Cause I have a lot of things to do and I yeah. need my brain to be working. Well, I'll be the first person to say like, the more I understand about brain physiology. And I always say there, there's a great book for any mom that's interested. It's called the XX brain by Dr. Lisa Moscone. And when I read that book, I was like, holy cow. Like I've always been very brain health, very cognitive health focused, but that took it to a new, uh, new level for me. And so I agree with Roseanne that a lot of people come to intermittent fasting out of curiosity or because they want to lose weight, but they stay for all the other benefits. And, and absolutely a hundred percent. Yeah. So um, my friend, Cynthia, you I have graced us with your presence. I'm so excited in this book launch. I've been at every step of the way. <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunately, in the world, we're not having live book launch parties because I'd be there and I and Cynthia would go to bed and I'd stay out till 4 a.m. No, you <laughs> it's true. <laughs> It's true. I'm a negotiate. I'm the one who does the after party. So um, life is life. We need a lot of joy in our life. But, you know, order this book. It's a great starting point. You know, in 2022, you know, we've come through a lot in 2020 and 2021. And it's about parents, mothers taking care of themselves. And you can go to Cynthia Thurlow.com backslash forward slash book um, to get her book. Um, and I'll have it linked. Um, but this is a wonderful way for you to reduce stress, get your brain optimized, reduce stress, reduce anxiety, reduce depression, um, and focus on yourself. Uh, self-care became a buzzword, but it only works if you do it. Yeah. And this is that first step. So, well, And one thing I want to just mention to your, your listeners and followers is that there are pre-sale bonuses only available up until publication date. So uh, all the pre-sale bonuses are things that are going to allow you to take your IF45 program and take it to another level. We've got Clean in 14, which is what I used to offer uh, prior to IF45 going live. We've got bonus recipes. Uh, we have a masterclass with bonus content that is not going to be available in the book and will not be available after publication date, uh, as well as a few other resources. And as I was telling Roseanne earlier, I'm a big believer that if I'm going to give a bonus, it actually has to be a value. I think a lot of authors give out a bunch of throwaway stuff when they, when they put, when they publish their books, but really these are things that I know will help you take your, your results to another level, whether it's cognitive, physical, or otherwise. Yeah. You know, maybe this is a spiritual journey for mm -hmm. you and you want to have a cleaner, more simple, simplistic lifestyle, you know, intermittent fasting, you know, it's one less meal you have to think about. You yeah, know, meal prep is much easier. Yeah, much easier. So, but she gives you all the tools and resources. And those are some awesome bonuses, girl. Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah. It's um, like my team and I, we joke, we're like, are we sleeping? Are we sleeping at all? I don't think so. <laughs> we're just working um, all the time. Yeah. And your Clean and 14 program is a great program, too. So, mm -hmm. I don't think I knew that was a bonus. So, that's a, in itself, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Just an unbelievable giveaway. So this is one step to self-care and better mental health in 2022. And I encourage everybody to do it. It's definitely been an awesome thing in both of our lives. And who's to, who knew Cynthia, this would be the thing as a woman's health expert that would transform your life 
bringing yeah. intermittent fasting into the lives of others and millions and millions of people. And this is just another um, tool for people. Uh, it's, I'm so excited for you. I'm excited for the people that are starting intermittent fasting. And hopefully this was educational for people and they got to understand it's more than just skipping breakfast. Absolutely. And I feel very grateful to have the opportunity to connect with your listeners again and connect with you as always. Take care, everybody. Start your health journey today.